Hello, my name is Anthony Hall and in this tutorial I'm just going to bring you and explain some of the basic uh, tools in the interface of this piece of software by Autodesk called Mudbox. So there's lots of different uh, sculpting software out there. I mean, I teach this one mainly because uh, it's free for education. So at here at college, I mean, if we've looked it into like uh, ZBrush, but that was going to cost us money. And we've looked at, uh, we also looked at uh, the ZBrush Mini, how it looked, it looked good, but you can't actually take your own models into this. So I thought this one, because it was free, and we've also got Maya, but we've also got Lightwave, and Lightwave didn't really have the sculpting options in it. I thought I'd go through how to actually use a basic interface but not only that I'll do like a, a little series of tutorials that will also show you that when you've sculpted something that you can take it into Lightwave and also if you've got a model in Lightwave you want to bring it in here and sculpt into it you can do that as well so I'll go through the basic options within uh, Mudbox. So with uh, Mudbox when you first open it it comes up with uh, these options to open uh, one of your files you've already created it also shows you reach files and also gives you some basic shapes to start with so I'm just going to use the plane and it opens up here and so basically if you hold down uh, the alt on your keyboard and then click your left mouse button you can rotate if you hold down alt in the middle right button you can move up down side to side like so and then if you hold alt in your right mouse button it's zoom in and out so it's as easy as that really for those three that's they're the three you kind of use you can go through here and just and make everything go from like front right left top uh, side and bottom if you want and then you just click home and it'll bring you back to where you were okay at the top here you've got your 3d view which is this you've got your uv view that automatically unwraps you've got image browser with any images and textures you're going to use which will hold in there for you you've got your different drop downs your normal kind of stuff if you're going to import stuff export stuff if you want to edit stuff i'm not going to go through all the stuff in here in this one you create uh, the meshes is you can add other meshes so you can add another ground plane or you can add multiple meshes that you can use in here as well uh, we're going to look at this so this is how you add more geometry to each of your meshes and how you can go up and down through the actual different levels of subdivision uh, this is if you want to display certain stuff if you want your wireframe i've got it on at the minute as you can see but you can turn that off if you want and so on and the grid you can turn on and so on it's obvious stuff in here that you can do and again you can delete and create uv maps and so on and again these are the other tabs and windows you can open if you want and there's a help bit so without going into too much depth uh, but like I said if we do, what I'm going to do in this one is just concentrate on the sculpt so here look you've got a sculpt option and you've got your one layer and the layer here is the sculpt and there's a tab here with different options in so with the actual sculpt tools you've got uh, different uh, options so when you hover over them it will bring up a little explanation of what it is for each one so if you're wondering what they kind of do they're dead obvious when you use them what they actually do but my suggestion is go through them all and have a little play uh, you can do non-destructive editing on this a bit like in Photoshop so what I'm saying by that is if I was if I stay on this here this option here if I go over here you've got the size of the brush and the strength so if I just click and drag and let go you've got this and you can obviously use a, a whack on tablet and stuff with this and it's on this layer but if i want i can undo that i can right mouse click click a new layer and you can see it's connected and it's the top one here and then if i go on the new layer and draw into it or sculpt into it and turn it off it's sculpted into a new layer so you can have multiple sculpts on different layers if you want just like like so you can also if I scoop back into uh, this layer sorry you can actually you get a little handle at the end here that what this is for is to blend it into the other layer if you want to and stuff like that and then if obviously if you right mouse click you can make a group of scopes you can delete it duplicate it flatten it and so on but we'll just go back to this one layer uh, but like I said you can make multiple layers 
as you're going on to sculpt into on multiple objects if you go uh, so yeah going back to the first sculpt so what i've got is just basic brush and you've got the size and the strength now on the keyboard if you want to know the shortcuts if you go up to help you've got a uh, uh, sorry, not help, it's window. You can go to hotkeys and this will tell you what they're assigned to and you can reassign them yourself. So basically, if you want to know the shortcut for the size and strength, it's your little square brackets to go smaller and it's and then uh, for the strength, so you can see it going up again and there's one for the strength as well. you just got to look for it again. So you can mirror whichever way you want do you know what I mean? So if you you can decide on the axis to 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 mirror on. So if you want to add that, you can, uh, and then you can turn it off, uh, and then it's only on one side if you want. Like so you can inverse a function. So what I mean is you'll dig in rather than up. Uh, if you hold control on your keyboard, uh, and again unclick that. I mean control on your keyboard when this is not on is the inverse bit so that's a shortcut for that so i'm dreadful at learning sh uh, shortcuts and again what you can do is you can use the stamp tool uh, and if you're going to use a stamp tool there is stamps here so basically what that does is if i use this one it uses the positive and negative colors uh, to sculpt into the actual object so if i was going to do a land now uh, or create some kind of model. What I would do is decide on the sub patch level. So the more polygons, the more detail you get. So up here where it says mesh, you would go add new level, and it tells you it was six thousand odd. Uh, let's add another one. So now it's twenty five thousand. It's just over a hundred. And again, we've got four. Uh, now we've got half a million nearly. But the difference is uh, the quality of the actual detail of the sculpt. I mean, I've just dug into that based on the strength. So let's pull the strength down, but let's put the size up. Like so. And again, there's a bit here where you can randomise how the sculpt, how the, the where you can play about with them a little bit to randomise how the actual uh, the positive and negative space are shown here a lot and how they're going to sculpt in here as well and how they how they work when you play about this so you've got some functionality there as well and again you can use any of these you can also take your own in as well so to do that you just uh, there's lots of them alpha the kind of alpha maps you can go into photoshop if you go into photoshop create a, like a 10 or 20 by 20 centimeter and then use a think about positive and negative space to actually create it and then just save it as a if you don't want a background if you just want it a solid you can have it as a png or a jpeg i use png or jpegs in here and then you just literally come in here and add the stamp just make sure it's in your contents folder or somewhere safe because if you delete it it will be able to find it in here and so on and each tool has all these kind of options as you go through them so as you go down you've got the distance of the stamp so that's every kind of stamp so if i go on to onto this tool here and uh, I do this. I've dragged it along, and two stamps of the same thing are that close together. So, based on the distance, and if I click and drag, one, two, there's a distance now. So, there's a gap in between the distance as you, as you as you actually sculpt into it, and then the lower, really low, uh, again, will we look exic exactly the kind of on top of each other like so so that's the distance and then you've got the snap to curves you've got how steady the stroke is you've got the fall off that you can experiment with so if i was using this one let's say like so now let's just show you the difference when i just mess about with this you can see how different playing with the fall off will kind of be based on what you kind of using and what you kind of uh, just re so you can reset it all and what you're kind of doing and so on. Uh, there's a thing in here called tessellation. So what this means is when you sculpt in, or let's say for instance I'm going to use the, the grab. If I didn't have uh, tessellation on, let me just go and make the size a bit, put the strength down. When I like pull up, 
like so it's dragging and stretching these polygons out but what I want to do is I don't want to stretch him and manipulate them that way what I want to do is I want uh, when I do this if I go back I want to uh, mudbox to add extra polygons so they're not stretching uh, the actual current polygon so it's telling you it's going to do that but it'll, it'll lead to a higher mesh so if I pull this up and then I pull this out as I'm pulling it out you'll see weird things like it looks like the polygons on screen are flickering they're not flick, flickering as such that it's adding extra polygons so you're not stretching the original ones so it's kind of adding to them without it kind of uh, giving like if you've got a lower polygon rate and you're stretching it and it starts pulling there's only so much stretch it will do with this what it's what it's doing for you is it's adding those extra polygons so you're getting the shape you want so let's go back again to here uh, again uh, you've got this step up and step down so what that does is just stepping up and stepping down through the polygon rate and stuff uh, and again each one of these tools has exactly the same kind of thing the size the strength the stamp you can use so smooth it does it, it does what it says on tin kind of thing you kind of uh, y you can slowly based on how uh, the size strength you can smooth stuff out I mean it's not a lot to smooth out here it's the same with uh, it kind of relaxes very similar as well uh, and again uh, flatten as you can see there's a few very sim si similar but do different stuff and at any time you can use the actual so flatten even though I'm using flatten it's flattening within this alpha map kind of thing so with a white area it's pushing down and uh, and so on and so forth based on the strength of stuff so if it's the highest strength it'll push push it down uh, uh, so on uh, again so again they all do pinch obviously it's going to it's going to drag the actual uh, polygons together so if I do this kind of thing here and go on to uh, pinch it'll start look trying to pull them together and stuff so it's pinching the polygon rate together and the two mounds again very kind of obvious flat foamy spray uh, repeat you've got a uh, imprint the imprint so if I want to imprint something you click drag it on let go and it imprints whatever to get more detail you need more polygons so you could just choose again imprint boom it will add it like so on and so forth wax wax is a bit like you know like a uh, well wax imagine a bit of what melted wax off of a candle and stuff and it makes it feel waxy and and so on and so forth uh, and then you've got scrape, so a bit like having a palette that uh, a palette knife that you're scraping stuff along. You've got fill, which will start filling empty gaps for you. You've got knife, and you can decide about the knife to kind of go again with control, cutting into it based on what you're choosing again. And again, smear is uh, smudging, bulges, bulge stuff up. And again, you could use all this. You can, you can come in here if you want to and I know that these edges don't need all these polygons because I'm not going to use them so what you could do is you can start rubbing the actual all these polygons out because I don't I know that all this side's just going to be nothing so why would I have loads and loads of polygons and stuff uh, and so on and you've got an erase uh, button as well holding so I'm holding shift and then I'm just erasing them out so with this one I'm holding shift to make it actually and they're gone so yeah so with the race you just got to hold shift just got to keep forgetting about certain uh certain shortcuts and so on uh but yeah i mean i've zipped through them all but like i say they've all got the same kind of functions that you can play around with it's not that hard at all uh you've got the stencil tool so what stencil does if i choose this it brings up this so it's going to stencil whatever's in the white area only it's saying here look move the stencil s middle mouse button so you hold s place it where you want it so it says R and left to intensify it. Let's cancel that. Uh, and then, but basically, when I when I click now, whatever's inside that white area, look, that's the area it's going to stencil into, and so on, and so on. 
okay and then you can turn it off you've got this nice little I don't know what it is in the middle and again you can make your own stencils up as well uh, and just start manipulating so there's one there's an ear but obviously for to use the ear you're gonna have to uh, have a flat a flat plane and then also kind of sculpt inside that area probably need more polish you can see it's trying to add the ear but you're probably going to need more polish to get the more detail it's generally trying to push it in there look can you see <laughs> so again uh, you can do that with your own images if you want uh, again and just uh, use whatever you kind of want with it the fall off is basically the, the distance from the the area of the bush from top to bottom and how each one based on what you use will work in a slightly different way and again you can tell the difference of the fall off and stuff which is quite cool uh, and again the, uh, you can experiment with that I never change these these are like the default kind of materials you can switch to so I mean it's up to you I mean I, I mean like I said I never it's not very often I kind of change them. Same with the lighting; you can jump between how you want, uh, how you want the lighting, different lighting to to kind of uh, to change and how it was going to look. But again, <sighs> it's not very often I, I kind of bother changing these, uh, and it's up to you. And you, again, you can add your own preset light. This one's quite good. The uh, camera. Uh, bookmark so let's say I want that to I uh, want that view I'll just go add that one just call I'll just call it cam one I also want a close-up of this let's call it cam two just for example and then what I can do is I can go back to these views whenever I want to start sculpting and stuff uh, if, I, if I wish so uh, I've absolutely zipped through that uh, and probably spoke too too long and too much but I've just like I said I've just gone through the basics of what these kind of tools are roughly without trying to babble on too long which I know I have done but uh, again it's a matter of experimenting it's not that hard choose whichever one uh, whichever starting point you kind of want to so again you can just start with a head if you want and start uh, manipulating the head like, uh, so it's just been hit by a car but again playing around and learning the tools I would uh, will do what I'll do in the next one is I'm going to introduce you to the next tutorial is how to do uh, painting in mud box and then what I'm going to do in a third tutorial is probably create a basic landscape and paint it and then show you how to export it and import it into Lightwave and render it in there and we'll also maybe make something basic in Lightwave, bring it in with the UV and show you how you can manipulate it in that way and to be honest those three or four tutorials will be fine for you to kickstart and get using uh, Mudbox. I believe there is a trial and if you want to actually buy it because you like it i think you have to rent it i think it's not a lot it's about 10 quid a month or something like that but if that's good or not i don't know but like i said uh it, it's actually it, it's free so for education and if you're a student and stuff so yeah just experiment and play look out for my next couple of tutorials about mud box because i'm going to keep on uh just kind of manipulating it and playing around and showing you the basics of it of how to get started with it so thanks for listening uh, check out my other tutorials please share and subscribe and look out for my next tutorial